Welcome to Looking Up with Laird here on SoRare TV. I am Andrew Laird, head of content over at SoRare Data. Joined once again by Sam Tai of Ranks FC and Harry Trades of the Harry Trades YouTube channel. Gentlemen, good to see you again. I'm going to continue the tradition we have of patting ourselves on the back for our calls from last week. To be honest, I, I feel like the point of this show is like, these are players who are looking up. Soon they will be good. They might be worth more. And instead, we're like getting guys who are banging goals and assists right away. I mean, it's basically <laughs> becoming like a game week preview show. How to win so rare immediately. Um, we had our boy, Connor Barron, get on the score sheet. Andre Silva on the score sheet. Callum O'Hare with some nice AA off the bench. Things are looking up for these guys. And we've got four more today. So anyway, gentlemen, good to see you. Yeah, things are looking up for us as well, huh, Harry? Yes. We're gonna, and the, we're the great thing is we own all these cards, so obviously we're getting <laughs> filthy rich while we do this. Um, oh, no. Just a, yeah, a quick fine. check. Number of uh, Antoine Griezmann cards owned by the group? Still zero. Okay, just... Still zero. Just checking that we're still <laughs> at zero for that, which might be so far the best call of the show. Thank you to everybody who Definitely. is watching. If you could please hit the like button. And if you have bought Antoine Griezmann because of this show, please let us know in the comments. And you can just laugh at us for all of your profits and winnings as we are below you. So uh, Harry is in his third location for our third episode here. And with that, I'm going to give him the uh, our, our kickoff choice here for uh, who which players are looking up this week. Thank you, Led. Um, yeah, third location for me, third episode in. I'm not sure I'll make it a fourth next week, but regardless, um, my first player... Um, that I'm looking to discuss. And in my opinion, things are definitely looking up for Ricardo Pepe. Um, stick, I'm sticking with the theme of, you know, US forwards, I guess. We had Timothy Weir last week, but this player has probably shown more in the last sort of five, six games. Well, way more than, than, than Weir has in that sense. But on loan from uh, Augsburg, playing for Groningen right now in the Eredivisie. 19 years old, under 23 until 2027. And the kid's got five goals in his last five games. So if that doesn't look like a looking up situation, I don't really know what could. You know, he's on penalties now, it looks like. He's in a brand new league. And for whatever reason, his style of play is just suiting the Eredivisie way more. Whether that's, you know, his teammates are looking out for him, you know, that much more than they were at Augsburg. Because as far as I'm aware, he didn't score a league goal for Augsburg. Um, so things were looking you know, quite bleak for him after that move from Dallas. And yeah, I'm just pleased to see him sort of get some goals under his belt because as a forward, there's nothing more frustrating than not scoring goals. That is why you're in the team. Um, and yeah, uh, the, I mean, the, the reason why Pepe came into Groningen was uh, Jorgenstrand Larsen, who's now playing for Celta Vigo, who scored a load of goals last season for them move to Celta Vigo so yeah perfect opportunity for Pepe and yeah I just really think that he could sort of kick on from here and, and go on a, a an even longer spell of, of scoring goals I like this call for a number of reasons um some are selfish I don't own any Pepe cards but obviously a, a U.S. striker who is uh, performing abroad is always nice this did remind me and I was actually thinking about this yesterday there was a time when another American striker was banging goals in the Eredivisie Arid and everyone was like, he's the next big thing. Josie Altidore did not turn out to be the next big thing, but he did have multiple, I believe multiple 20 goal seasons for uh, AZ. I'll have to look that up. Wow. Minimum one, possibly two. And I was like, this league, we've known because of that, I've always known it to be like a high scoring league. And so when Pepe went uh, to play there, I was like, all right, things surely have to get better because his time in Germany was a dis like, I, I, I don't know if you can say anything better than it was a disaster. Like his last goal, if you look on this score sheet, I believe was in October mm -hmm. and it was for okay. the U.S. men's national team against Jamaica. So like, yeah, that's a long time for a striker to not score goals. And so just the move to, uh, to the Netherlands was going to help just in terms of playing time. Confidence is obviously there. And now the goals are coming. He's got a fairly favorable schedule coming up too before the World Cup. I don't want to give 
any indication of what I think will happen, whether he makes the World Cup squad or not, or if he starts uh, based on kind of the recent play. I don't think so. Like, I don't think he's going to be like a player that you target to get World Cup utility out of. But um, I like this call. Obviously, you're, you know, he's had the goals already, but it, he's in a league in a situation where it looks like the goals should continue at least. Yeah, definitely. Um, being there number nine, I just, yeah, I, I think everything kind of has to go through him in that sense. And like I said, for whatever reason, it wasn't sort of working out that way at Augsburg. Harder league, maybe, you know, he was younger at the time. I know this is only six months ago or whatever, but it's a it's a tough move going from FC Dallas to a Bundesliga team, albeit it's not like Bayern or Dortmund, but he's, he's going to play for Augsburg and he was starting games. You know, they gave him chances before, you know, it just didn't work out. And, you know, th those moves can be a bit daunting from time to time. Like you do see it. It's not always like... This guy smashes in the MLS at 18 years old, scoring multiple hat tricks, whatever. He goes to the Bundesliga. It's a different kettle of fish. And I just think yeah. maybe he's found his level four now. And hopefully he can just carry this on up into the World Cup and give him give it just give himself a chance of, of doing something there. Because if he if he scores another three or four goals in these next three games, there's no way Greg can't really like take him serious in that sense. I know it's a small sample size, but you know, you have to take players on, on good form. And I know there's other forwards on good form for the US, but I think he has to be in contention. Uh, Groningen here is a really nice spot for any young player over the years. Um, they've got a really serious, notable cast of former players that have come through there. Um, it includes Luis Suarez, it includes Arjen Robben, it includes Virgil van Dijk. Um, and I think Dusan Tadic was there for a bit as well, if memory serves. As clubs go, in terms of handling youth, handling trajectories... They seem to be pretty good. And I think we can probably take the lessons from that and maybe from Pepe as well. And just as so rare players, just be on the lookout for any player under the age of 21 who gets a shot or, or comes comes up through Kroningen or, or gets loans there. Like they treat them well and they prosper there. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Great call there. Just a follow up on the Josie Altador line. Uh, 15 goals in 26 starts in the 2021, excuse me, 2011 12 season for AZ. The following season, 23 goals in 33 games. And then uh, obviously the move to Sunderland, one goal, one assist in 31 appearances, 19 <laughs> starts. It's tough. Mm. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Sam, who do you, uh, who would you like to add to the, our list this week? Okay, so as usual, I'll go to the opposite end of the age spectrum to Harry here. And um, I'm actually surprised at myself that my pick this week is Casemiro, who is now at Man United, of course, and now finally actually in the team. They, they took their sweet time introducing him, Sheesh. which I think surprised quite a few people. But time of recording, the L5 is, I think it's 67 pretty much from the moment he stepped into the Manchester United side. If you look at the scores, he's been excellent. Um, and I, I found myself yesterday just in, in looking at this, just comparing him in price to some of the other guys in, you know, Champ Europe who kind of score very similar to, similarly to this, like their L5 was in this area. And um, his L5 is actually better than Joshua Kimmich. Um, and it's about the same as, same as Hakan Chalhanolu and Bruno Fernandes. So, all of those players are somewhere between 4, 10 and 20 times more expensive than Casemiro. Yeah. Now, I know that some of them have got years on him, but Casemiro is only 30. I feel like we, we, we're we guilty a lot of the time of, of thinking Casemiro's 34 or something because he's been around for so long, but he's really not. Um, and there's, there's three things in particular, I think, here that, that are very, very interesting for him. First of all is nailed on starter, elite yeah. player, impact is clear, sealed his spot, nailed on starter number two looking at those scores there isn't really any rhyme or pattern to who he scores best against he just plays really well and scores really well no matter who the opponent is which means he's somewhat fixture proof i would argue which is nice mm -hmm. and then of course he now plays in the premier league so we're not expecting him to be minted again anytime soon so he'll certainly become a bit more scarce than the other guys that we we often compare him to in the same way that that Bruno will be more scarce as well. But when I saw his L5, I just thought, OK, wow, that's that's kind of interesting. You know, we see Joshua Kimmich is like this. We hold him up as this like perfect SO5 midfielder. He's like he's the one. And Casemiro is performing just as well. 
but he's like 20 times less expensive. <laughs> so Casemiro is a player, like one of the first players I looked at when I started considering playing champion Europe, which was like last season until um, Quinny ruined it with all of the Marseille talk. But anyway, um, so Casemiro is just, as you, I mean, as we see on the, on the score chart, he's just super consistent. Like he's not going to get you the nineties and hundreds cause he's not a goal scorer. And he's probably more likely to get a red card than a goal, but like that aggressiveness allows him to get good AA when the referee's keeping the card in his pocket. The move to Manchester United made so much sense. And the only thing that didn't make sense was how long it took for him to get into the team because it, yeah. it almost felt like he was like, he didn't have a preseason and they were just like waiting for him to get up to fitness. But like he was, he had the preseason. Like, I think everyone knew he was leaving, but like he was still there with Real Madrid. And so just like every day the or every game, the United lineup would come out and Casemiro's like on the bench. And you're just kind of like, what is he doing there? Yeah, what are you waiting for? Right, exactly. What are you waiting for? And now that we see that he's playing, and of course he scores a goal after I say he's not much of a goal scorer, although the, <laughs> they're the two yellow cards before um, in back-to-back -back games. But like he fits this, this team... He is now uh, nailed on. And you're right. Like, I think he's he's always been underpriced. And the lack of new cards doesn't seem to be increasing his price, like, as much as just the fact that he's playing now. Um, yeah. Obviously, we see kind of a little bit of a trend moving up. But, yeah, I think this is a great call and agree, like, that things are starting to look up and there's, I think it only can go higher because of, of the situation that he is in and the fact that the world cups at least helps him. Like, I think there's every indication that he should be important there now. I think, yeah, I think he starts for Brazil in midfield right. <laughs> and uh, Brazil are, you know, de facto favorite or second favorites to win this tournament. I think if you ask most people, they're looking at Brazil and Argentina as the two teams most likely to win this world cup. So you're expecting Casemiro to play five or six games in this tournament, maybe, yeah. maybe seven and win it all. Like, that's great. That's that's amazing. His price, considering that, does feel quite depressed. Um, I can't remember exactly who said it to me. It may even have been you, Led, and I'm really sorry. But someone said to me, a wise man once said, I'll throw that in just in case there it was you, um, that once a card stops getting minted, he sort of gets forgotten. It, it's a bit of a trend. And Casemiro, I think because he's not getting minted anymore, just because he doesn't pop up in the auctions and stuff like that. Like, you just don't see him as much. And it's possible that that is impacting mm -hmm. things. So, yeah, I just happened to stumble across his profile and my eyes went, whoa, like cartoon style when I saw his L5. And I just thought, wow, I can't believe he's, he's you know, four times less expensive than Chalhanolu um, or, you know, 10 times less expensive than Bruno. That's, that's crazy to me. Yeah, I think... I don't know if you heard that from me, but that is something I have said. So I'll take some credit for it, um, certainly. But yeah, no, but I, I really do believe that it's kind of, and it works counter to like what we think should happen because this whole game is like based on scarcity. And now you're like, oh, no more cards are minted of this guy. So like each one is now, like we know the defined scarcity now and we're not going to get any new ones. But because of that, everyone's like, oh, all right, well. Ooh, what's on auction? And then you're just like, oh, Casemiro's <laughs> not there. And so, yeah, I, th I think you're right. He gets like forgotten. Like a player of this caliber playing for, you know, one of the most popular clubs in the world. And the fact that we're seeing basically like 12 transactions in the last two weeks, maybe it's a little more than that, is for rare cards is just, uh, yeah, I think he's he's overlooked and hopefully people are now looking at him because he, he deserves it and... Um, yeah, I think there's plenty to go on. Cool. Good call there, sir. Um, Harry, who do you got next? I have another Eredivisie player, actually, which is quite strange. And he is another loanee. And his name is Marouan Arzakan, if we can spell that. <laughs> Arzakan. Uh, A-Z-A-R-K-A-N. A-Z-A-K? A Z A R, sorry, ah. K A N. This is great content. This is my goodness gracious. There we go. So, little Marouane. Um, he came. He came 
well, I came across him at the start of this season um, when his cards first initially got minted. It, well, just to start off, there's no way he's 20 years old. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand how he's 20, but regardless. Um, yeah, I think the first two games of the season, he, he bagged two decisives. And I think he had a, a little bit of a, like his first initial mints were pretty expensive. And then from there on, I was like, okay, hang on a minute. There, there must be a player here. And then you can see there's a bit of a, a DMP yellow and even an an orange fest, I guess, in the le- in the next sort of six or so games. But he's come back into the side for whatever reason. Um, got himself an assist in that 7-1 loss to Ajax. But then got a goal and an assist on the weekend against AZ. Um, and yeah, he's a really, really tricky inside forward slash right winger. He basically reminds me of Insigne. Um, very small, like very, very small. Very tricky, quick. He's got two goals, three assists this season. Um, but he's only averaged 51 minutes. So there's definitely scope for him to like increase that, I think, if he can like stay in the side. Um, he's stupidly young. Like we said, he's 20 years old and he is on loan from Feyenoord. And um, a few big Twitter accounts, like, you know, the sort of Wonder Kid Twitter accounts I sort of follow, all seem to think that he could actually earn himself a chance next season at Feyenoord, which would only probably do... Th- good things for him i guess if he's playing in europe as well um but yeah somebody that sort of yeah came on my radar a little while ago went off it and sort of creeped back in and i think things are definitely looking up for him yeah that's really encouraging that this price graph almost like mimics the the score graph like early season somebody sees like a young kid for u23 forward who's like getting decisives and everybody jumps in then obviously Mm -hmm. the the dmps come and the price falls but it does look like People are paying attention as we see this little kind of increase recently, but that's still, I mean, I don't want to like compare to the early season, but if you compare to the early season, my goodness, is this cheap? <laughs> yeah. I'm scared of that graph. I've Definitely. got, I'm fortunate, unfortunately, I've bought a few players off oh. the back of the first couple of games of the season under 23 who put up huge AA. And I'm like right in that kind of rising blue bit right at the start. And uh, my graphs look a bit like that. Check the ass and Habib Cater have done exactly this. Mm. Uh, and I'm like, hmm, hmm, maybe I got a bit overexcited. And these people clearly got a little bit overexcited, but the scores are there. Um, you just have to be a little bit more patient with them sometimes. Yeah, yeah this is a fun call. Um, so is the expectation just that he, he'll continue to be a starter? I think so, yeah. I mean... If they're winning games and he's scoring goals, it's hard to drop a player that's doing that for you, I think. And um, yeah, ho- hopefully he can sort of, yeah, get these next few games under his belt, go ahead away for the next game. Okay, fire Nord. Well, he won't even be able to play in that, but the next two, I guess, he'll be able to play in. And um, yeah, I just want to, yeah, I just want to see if he can sort of kick on from from this little, this little looking up situation that we found himself in. One goal, well, two assists and one goal in the last two. So yeah, excited to see to see where he'll be in the next few games. That's fun. Um, that's something I don't know. Does the uh, Aridivisi do the loan? Loanees are not allowed to play against their parent club? I don't know. I imagine not, but I'm not sure. No. It was always weird to me. I think it's... To be honest, Syria I think most... Doesn't... Yeah, I think I, it, the, the majority of times you are allowed to play. It's very English to be like, no, you can't do that. Um... Mm. So I don't know exactly. There's no, there's no, there's not necessarily a rule to it. I've always found that England are the anomaly there. Mm. Um, okay. Because I used to find it really well. I remember sitting there and watching, um, oh, back in the day, I watched Chiro Immobile score against Juventus and he was co-owned. Remember when you used to be to co-own players? Oh, top times. Um, <laughs> and he was, he was playing against the team that co-owned him and the, uh, he scored against them and, and Juventus lost that day and it was a pretty damaging loss. And the man responsible for it was their own employee. Their own player. <laughs> it's like okay then something's gone wrong there but yeah no it does happen a bit as long as you don't celebrate the goal then i think it's okay oh he celebrated <laughs> <laughs> it's chiro immobile the only yeah, thing he can do is kick the ball in the net he might as well he has to celebrate he can't do anything else fair enough fair enough uh all right uh sam you want to uh give us our last one Sure. Okay. So we go from the glitz and the glamour of a five-time Champions League winner, Casemiro, to a player in the second division of Spanish football. It's Carlos Neva, N-E-V-A. He plays for Granada. And he, well, I say he plays for Granada. He hasn't played 
since March, unfortunately, because in March he tore his ACL. Um, and I've, that was at a really bad time for Granada, who were fighting and scrapping for survival in La Liga. Yeah. And he went down. It was a one, one of several blows that Granada just couldn't quite recover from. Although, to be fair, they only got relegated on the last day, and it's because they missed a penalty. Yeah. If they'd have just scored it and won, they would have stayed up. So a bit of a nightmare for everybody involved. But never has been training for about a month now. He's even snuck into a couple of squads, as you can see. Uh, he's made the bench twice mm -hmm. and then dropped back out again. He was never actually going to play, uh, but they're just kind of trying to reintegrate him as much as possible. They're not rushing him, but he's close. And when he actually does return, I think this is a really nice story. When he does return, this is, this is a moment that Granada fans will really, really celebrate. Um, and the brief backstory for that is that he's a bit of a local hero. And he's been at Granada for about five years now, which in Granada terms is pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, it basically deserves a testimonial because the player turnover at that club has been absolutely remarkable. In the last six years, they've been uh, got relegated, been promoted back up, qualified for Europe, beat Napoli, and then lost to Man United in the Europa League quarterfinals, then got relegated again in six years it's been absolutely ridiculous and so as you can imagine the, the player turnover is, is is ridiculous they've gone from needing players of a europa league quality to they're in the second division so really one of the only constants has been carlos never so when he went down with a bad knee injury it was a real disaster um but what he's going to step back into here is granada's defense which is really really solid for the most part mostly at home um but really, really solid. Ito Karanka coaches this team. I'm sure if any Middlesbrough fans will remember, he was, well, his football wasn't great, but they kept clean sheets. Mm -hmm. um, and this Granada team are pretty stingy. He's going to step back in at some point. He's clearly a La Liga level player, a top tier player. And so he should score very, very well in the Segunda. The matrix change will obviously help him as well as a fullback. Um, he hasn't played since the matrix changed. I don't know if he knows this, but um you know uh, he, while, while he was out we changed it uh so he should be looking forward to that and he's also just disgracefully cheap like he's so cheap because no one actually knows who he is right. <laughs> <laughs> but i follow granada so i do um and i think he's i think he's great um and i've got a couple of his limiteds because they're just like they're like two pounds are they oh they are actually auctioning them yeah they, they've got the new ones out for sure yeah, yeah. Um, he's got a couple of rares out. The rares super cheap. I think everything's really cheap here. I just don't think anyone knows who Carlos Never is. I mean, the the prices certainly indicate that. Yeah, yeah. And like you look at his previous scores, and you're like, well, the scores aren't that great. They're at a La Liga level. He's right. now at the second level, and the matrix has changed a bit, which may help him. Um, well, that probably incorporates on that graph. To be fair. Um, but he's going to drop down a tier. He's going to be way too good for this team. He's moving into a solid defence. That 10 points for a defender clean sheet is going to happen pretty regularly. And of course, we know the Segunda plays through the World Cup. So people that are looking for that kind of utility through November need to be looking at these kinds of players. And the super smart move is to pick one up who is so cheap because no one actually knows who he is yet. Yeah, I wonder how long it takes him to start playing 90s consistently mm. again. Obviously, a long-term injury. Like, the expectation is that he'll work his way back. But And you mentioned that he's already been training for a month. But uh, it could be that busy period where maybe it, it almost makes it easier to know when he's playing because maybe he takes a game off and then all of a sudden you know, yeah, if they rotate or, you know, they alternate or whatever it is. Like, yep. the it's okay if a guy is not locked on if we know when he is going to play. And so maybe they'll because of his stature there and the fact that it was a long-term injury, maybe we can get kind of better indications of when, when he'll actually start. Yeah. I mean, Karanka does rotate the defense around a little bit too much for my liking anyway, um, to be honest with you. I mean, I know they have to play a lot of games, but I do think he's gone overboard on, on rotation, mm -hmm. uh, but you can't, but you can read the rotation quite yeah. well. Um, it's, it's pos if you just look at who plays and who doesn't and when the scheduling is, you, it is possible to basically guess what's going to happen. He does the same with Jose Callejon, who's 35 and now mm -hmm. playing up front for Granada. You know when he's going to play and when he isn't or when he's going to go on the bench. You can see from his game that like, he will not play Callejon every three days. He, he won't do it. If there's a midweek game, he puts him on the bench 
and brings him off the bench and you can see you can see the pattern so it's going to be possible to do that with Carlos Never as well um they probably won't try to overload him but they'll bring him back in right. so i'm really looking, really looking forward to seeing it um really looking forward to seeing it in fact i've just i just had did i, I don't uh, on my so red data because i'm such a small fish compared to you led you know i i swim in your wake yeah. um i i don't even have the super rare prices popped up there and um i just noticed that he was super cheap so i was just looking at that thinking oh hang on a minute it could be that could be quite good but um in fairness, I think Harry's a bigger whale than I am. So if we're really going to start. Yeah, but this is your art. show. Yeah. <laughs> this is all about you, Led. This has nothing to do with us. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. Um, so there you go. Yeah, there you go. Carlos never. Can't happen soon enough. Yeah, no, that uh, I like that. That's, a, that's fun. And again, that's like something that the stats won't show. Like, obviously, if you're somebody who's like combing the SO5 scores and you see that somebody has been out for a long time and happens to make the bench, but that's not something that if you just look at Carlos Neva's, uh, you know, card here and with an L15 of zero and an L5 of zero, obviously, and he's not playing, then you would know that he's coming back. So that's just just the type of player that I think gets highlighted on this show That that's helpful for people who just go right on the numbers. See? Watching second division, division Spanish football is not a waste of time. Can you tell my wife that? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fine. Stay out of it. Stay out of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as uh, everyone has noticed uh, during the show, we've been adding to the uh, Looking Up with Laird on Sorare TV public watch list. So anybody who wants to follow along with the players that we're adding, uh, you can just do that by... Uh, hitting the heart uh, when you just search for looking up with Laird. And then in the comment, in the notes, excuse me, I'll add um, the date of when each one was was added in so that um, it's easier to track of when those are, <clears throat> when um, we put them on the list. So as simple as that. Um, so yeah, I think that's um, everything that we have for today. Gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for those picks. Uh, thank you to everybody who has tuned in here on Surreal TV. If you could please hit the like button. Uh, share the video with anyone who you think would enjoy it or even with people who you don't think would enjoy it as long as they just kind of click on it watch for a few minutes that's always really helpful for us and again uh, there's a lot of good content coming out on so rare tv i think this one is still the best i haven't seen anything better and so if you guys could uh, just like the videos for that reason that's always uh, really nice and hopefully it can encourage uh, everyone else on so rare tv to get going here because uh, I think we got something good here so we'll be back next week for episode four who knows where harry will be but we'll find out next week gentlemen good luck and i'll talk to you then <laughs>